So to kick off this community call, uh, the first thing that I wanted to go over was an idea that we mentioned during our board meeting a couple of weeks ago. And we've kind of had this idea bouncing around since like the project started, like uh, I guess a year and a half ago. But um, it's had a couple of different names. And uh, what I'd like to do is sort of pitch the idea to you guys. And then we have a couple of different designs um, on what it might look like. And then just to sort of hear your overall thoughts, I think before we show you the designs, overall thoughts, and then uh, get into what it could actually look like within Research Hub. So the idea here, and we've had a couple of people express feedback kind of requesting this feature, but um, it's like a hypothesis evidence graph. So the idea is if there's a hypothesis like M theory, for instance, in physics, um, you could have a post that says like, here's the hypothesis. Um, and then anyone can come in and add papers that either support or refute that hypothesis. And then potentially there's also like a wiki style summary of the hypothesis. Um, this is like a very specific example but one uh, piece of feedback that Pat and I received maybe like six months ago was someone, um, have you ever heard of the drug called finasteride? Um, it's like a testosterone analog that's used for uh, people to prevent hair loss in theory. But one of the issues is once you start um, messing with someone's like sex hormones, there are oftentimes other side effects. So um, this person was very passionate about educating uh, the world about like some of the sexual side effects that occur when you take finasteride for hair loss, where um, he didn't feel that his physician had adequately made him aware of these side effects. So what he wanted to do was to be able to create a hypothesis that says like, hey, you know, finasteride has, uh, you know, significant sexual side effects, and then collect all of the papers and even like data sets that also supported that hypothesis. So that way they could use it as like a rallying point for their community and share it with like uh, clinicians in order to like make doctors actually aware of some things that like some of the like drug marketing materials don't necessarily always um, do a good job of explaining. So that's sort of the big picture idea is to be able to crowdsource um, theories and then also evidence supporting or refuting those theories. Um, there's a couple different ways that we could go about this, but I guess uh, I'll stop there and then just hear what do you guys think overall of that concept? Like, does that sound valuable to you? I'm, I'm, picking, I'm thinking of examples to show you here, but that's typically what they do in meta-analysis. So people would pick up, you know, research question, like, I don't know, does early alcohol exposure negatively impacts development or something among this age. And they would pick up studies that have similar, that are asking similar question. And the problem is, uh, and that what I think will be the biggest bottleneck here is there is no, there will be no agreement on what studies to include and which, which do not, not include, right? Because they are not gonna be there's never gonna be the same design twice, right? So this study in rats that shows that finasteride has the side effects, should, should we include it? Is it like indirect evidence that in humans it might be also the case? And this study in like younger males who were taking half the dose, but they were also in the alcohol exposure, something therapy, that's kind of like, the problematic, maybe a slightly confounded study because they were doing two things at the same time. Maybe it's some weird interaction between the two. Do we include this one? This one had, you know, weird administration protocols. They were doing it early in the morning. Do we include it or not? You know what I'm saying? Totally. Yeah, 100%. So, th so there will be need to be some sort of tool or way for people to organize and like maybe establish, I won't say power users, but someone like some sort of committee or whatever per each question that will have the final say in whether something is included and excluded. And of course there will be some disagreement with those people, but if they are democratically selected to represent this hypothesis. 
maybe that will work. I think... What would be like the bigger goal? Because to me, it sounds just like I kind of maybe disagree with Anton what you said. Because to me, it sounds more like science doing its uh, its thing. Because then you, of course, every time you write a paper, there's papers like. Uh, yeah, you always can say like, ah, this method they use, that's not really relatable in this kind of situation. But I mean, yeah, if you have an hypothesis and you have people thinking about it, posting articles, and maybe you do get kind of, uh, if there's enough people involved, you maybe get a consensus. I don't know. Well, well so if we if there is no filter preventing people including all sorts of papers i'm sure there will be people who who like stretching facts a lot like with the finasteride i don't know maybe they come up maybe they will introduce an article where they did it in some other derivation of testosterone they'll be like they are similar enough to basically consider it the results applicable to finasteride and who is going to argue with those people they're just going to put if, if it's open access right everyone can put more stuff in they're just going to clutter the entire thing with irrelevant articles and it's just going to be garbage you know if you're looking at it and there's like irrelevant stuff all over the place place how are you supposed to use it so we've, we've talked about this a little bit and it, so it just to distill i think uh, both of your comments it's it sounds like the idea itself is valuable and the implementation, um, like we'd have to be delicate with like how we actually build it out in order to ensure that like productive collaboration comes out of it. Um, Nami, do you have do you have any thoughts? Yeah, the implementation is the one of us thinking. Like so, the first like I'm thinking like version one uh, part of uh, structure here is like uh, there's a claim. Uh, that the, Yes, articles, like supporting articles here, no articles here, no waiting, right? Like we are talking about waiting, which like an independence is more sure or not. That's gonna come up later. Now, do we want that structure, kind of like grainy things right now? Or do we just want kind of like list of articles that are supporting or refuting this claim? And I don't know, actually, answer to that. It's, I mean, the first step sounds interesting to me also. But I acknowledge that uh, there are issues on the that as well. So, so maybe it makes sense to dive into the designs too, because I think that might give a little bit more insight onto how we're thinking about how this might work. Pat, you want to drive the screen? I think you might be on mute. OK, yeah, I'm going to do that right now. Um, okay, yeah, so there's, we've kind of like mocked out a couple different ways we think this could go. Um, one of them is like, um, I guess we'll go over the first one. So one of them is like, this is a hypothesis page, meaning someone is creating this page and they're creating some kind of like statement, like late evening exercise reduces like SWS in adults. That's like a statement. What we're thinking here is that people would add kind of relevant citations to this uh, like hypothesis and people would kind of like thumbs up or thumbs down the hypothesis of like yes this is like right or like no this is wrong and then we can get somewhat of like a general conclusion of like this hypoth like i don't know we can get something like 70 percent of people believe this 70 percent of scientists believe this is true let's say um and then you can see kind of like hey here's all the things that they uh cited to state why. Um, and then kind of like 
having a summary of results where people can kind of contribute to almost like a Wikipedia like summary of like, here's the breakdown of like this theory and like why this is true. And so in this one, there's a kind of like the user interactions are a little bit complex where you add citations to the citation graph here. And then you can also add kind of comments and statements into uh, like a summary here, like a Wikipedia style summary, like anybody can edit this thing. Um, and so this is one kind of approach to it. Another approach is um, instead of kind of having the Wikipedia summary, um, we, all the other kind of interactions would be roughly the same where you add a new, anybody can add a new citation, but then like um, either an, a an more in-depth explanation, people can kind of make these as almost as comments. Um, and in these comments, they can kind of tag their papers. And so they it, it's almost like instead of it being a wiki style, it would be person to person explaining, hey, this is why I believe this is true or false. And it'd be someone typing it up as a comment. A third iteration would be there's no kind of like central location for this stuff. But whenever someone adds a paper or like decides to like, um, oops, decides to like upvote, like support or reject one of these papers, they would put um, at minimum one sentence stating why um like they are either supporting or rejecting this citation for uh this hypothesis and so, so and, and can i have a question a quick question yeah so who who operate operates the sliders like if i if i come in and like oh i disagree with the top yeah. two papers i think the results are low quality you know or, right. or even you know suggest the opposite direction can i can i freely yeah so so these sliders will be a like uh, a combination of everybody's. So either we let people kind of slide this thing to like 80%, 90%, or we do something like this, so it's 50-50. So you it's an average of the vote? Yeah, it's an average of everybody's uh, stuff. So it'll show like, what we can do is like, one of them is if we do a 50-50, it'll be like if nine people voted like yes on this hypothesis, and then one person voted no, then it'd be like 90% of people believe like this paper, like contributes to the result in this way. Um, if we do a slider, it'd be the same thing. So, yeah. So you can only vote, yes, I agree with the interpretation of the person who submitted this, or I do not? Well, it's not necessarily the interpretation of the person who submitted it. We're more thinking like, um, let's take this as the like main hypothesis. We're more thinking like, hey, this is this is the hypothesis here, right? Um, like late evening exercise reduces SWS in adults. And so in, our, in my view of this, it's like this paper does in fact support the hypothesis because of X, Y, Z. And then you just give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, okay, okay. Right? So, so but but the option that the person who submitted it initially framed it that this paper supports the hypothesis what if i come in and look at this particular source and be like it supports the opposite right then you thumbs down you, you'd give the negative right but the negative here would both mean that it doesn't apply at all it's a bad um bad explanation right. or it supports the yeah the we, this is something we need to work through exactly like these fine details we're not 100 percent sure how it works out um but yeah yeah like it's, if we'd make it in this way where it's like this is a hypothesis then yeah we do run into that issue we need to figure out how to resolve and uh they will all just be average for the total overall right yeah yeah. And is there a way to weight them? Like, imagine one of these citations would be a meta analysis of like 200 studies. Right. That should probably be more impactful than, you know, another empirical. Yeah, argument. we're not entirely sure how that would go now. Um, oh, wow. 
So we have another paradigm that yeah. I think is worth talking about is um, structuring this a little differently, where uh, the main post at the top, that's a hypothesis now, would be a question. Yeah, that's this view of it. Yeah, so does intermittent fasting help with weight loss, right? And so then maybe uh, Nami, Anton, and I all have different opinions about this. And we could all submit hypotheses answering this question where we cite our own sources. And then Pat, Thomas, and Philip could vote up and down all of our hypotheses. And eventually the crowd would determine which hypothesis is most relevant in answering this question. Okay. We so I, see, I see now what is my problem with the thing. Your hypothesis right now, it's, it's like it's zero, one. Right. Intermittent fasting, it, it, it either works or doesn't work in decreasing the weight. The right. way the hypothesis probably should be structured is from negative one to one. Intermittent fasting, one represents helps you lose weight. Zero represents doesn't do anything. Negative right. one represents... Uh, makes you gain it weight. It actually yeah, makes, you, makes you gain weight. Actually, and some people would probably argue that, like my wife does research that, you know, about rebound eating and she would argue that yeah, right. it, it will lead to eventual weight gain. So maybe, like, think about this way: there is no, like, e, there is no hypothesis that is yes or no. It's like you should think in like the true parameter in the ideal world. Like, what is it? it it's from negative one to one, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So it, finasteride, it doesn't either like lead to side effects or doesn't lead to. Like it, it has this spectrum from like, you know, positive consequences, no consequences, negative consequences, you know? Right, right, right. Is there a way to implement it like yeah, that? Yeah, we, we could definitely do it that way. Yeah. So, so yeah. you would basically have like three options for, for the vote of each citation. So you'd say it supports like right. one, uh, one side of the hypothesis, the opposite side of the hypothesis, or is it relevant? Right. Get it out of my face. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So I guess in your mind, Anton, then like posing it as a question versus making a statement, does it matter to you? Can you give me an example of how it would look yeah, like? So, so let's say the question is like, does intermittent fasting help with weight loss? That's the like question that's posed. And then uh, people make hypotheses on it. Alternatively, we could say like intermittent fasting helps with weight loss. Yeah, I think the, the, so. This is how the studies are structured, right? So it's not it, it, you're saying the research question. It's not a hypothesis. The hypothesis right. is a statement, right? right so right, right. your hypothesis so here would be intermittent fasting leads to more right, weight leads, loss. Right. Exactly. That's a it's, hypothesis versus a question. Right. What and do you think it's better be, to prompt in the top section? Oh, you, you mean, so the yeah. real statement would be it leads to, but, but like the snippet or the minimized well, no. version would be. Okay, so I guess what we mean by this is like, let's say you're on like Research Hub in the feed, right? When you're searching for information on weight loss and intermittent oh. fasting, let's say, what would you rather see? Would you would you guys rather see a question saying like, does intermittent fasting help with weight loss, or would you rather see intermittent fasting leads to a decrease in weight loss, or does it not matter? Well, on matter? the inside, you sh it will ultimately be the statement, right? So because people right. will be you know supplementing it with uh, research, and the research is structured that way. So I'm I'm guessing if you will have to have both the question and the statement becomes confusing maybe yeah. so like if, if i'm have one yeah so i'm like if i'm scrolling if i'm scrolling for research hub and i'm like intermittent fasting decreases weight or leads to weight uh, decrease and then if i see it's like bright green it means it like has been very this state or like this claim this is like fda approved claim you know right. <laughs> this uh, has been verified by the community if right. it's if it's like bright green or, or i mean bright, bright red, red yeah. bright red maybe has actually been disproved or like rejected actually, by the community yeah, yeah it's like yeah so it's either now that gets confused yeah so it's like the opposite and yeah. if it's gray then it's inconclusive right inconclusive another thing that i want to kind of get at here is also like 
when we're thinking about adding kind of like a summary of results, you know, like basically distilling kind of like all the re relevant papers into something, what do you guys feel is easier for you to add like content? Would it be in a wiki style? Would it be in a comment? Or would it be just like a short statement on each single paper? I kind of do like the short statement version myself. Yeah. But on the other hand, there's one remark I had, and that's yeah. like it's kind of confusing with the bars. Uh, I think it's a nice idea, but like with the red bars and the green bars for the articles themselves, mm -hmm. is it like uh, if it's green, it supports um, the hypothesis and red right. doesn't? Right. So that's could also. Yeah. Okay. Or like supports but... the opposite side, you know? Yeah, because it could also like um, if uh, if the big bar is green and then one of the paper bars is in red, it could also look like, ah, but this is uh, completely wrong. Like right. um, this this paper isn't informative and thereby was downvoted by the by the public. Right. And not like. Uh, but this p uh, paper proves the hypothesis wrong. Oh. Rather like uh, it's not informative. Right, right. I think design-wise, we can figure that out and like get to a place where it works well. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing it will probably be resolved by having more options that you can vote. It supports, right, right, it supports right. the opposite, it's irrelevant, and it's, uh, it's inconclusive. It's like good, high quality, but right. inconclusive. Right, right, right. I would definitely hope that you will have the maybe the second version or the first where you, each introduced paper in favor or against a hypothesis can have its own you know comment section because i think this is good if, especially if you don't have any sort of ju you know judges or whatever people will need to be able to counter you know argue about about introducing certain arguments like imagine a person comes in and like immediately uploads a paper that's not shouldn't even be there doesn't apply right and, and hopefully there will be a person who writes this is not a relevant study this is there is why right and this comment will become most upvoted and people will look at immediately as soon as they scroll through the hypothesis entries yep. Yep. and one other thing like the links to the papers, do they link to the uh, the links of the journals, or is it a link to uh, the page of research hub? We try and have it automatically uh, be uploaded as a research hub, at least stub, and then the research hub paper page would have a link to the uh, initial like wherever it was hosted originally, like Nature or something like that. So if if I would like uh, add a paper to the hypothesis and wouldn't have a page on research hub, it would be automatically done or how would this be done? Yep, it'd be automatically created for you. Or or you would create your own. Like if you had some kind of like meta study that you wrote yourself, you know, that wasn't a PDF, it's not published anywhere. Like we had someone post something on GitHub. We could have a flow for you to create that inside research hub and then link it here. So Okay, yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. So, so we only have five minutes left, and I think this is probably the most important thing that we can do today. Um, Thomas, do you have any questions uh, from our conversation earlier while everybody's here? Um, not really. Okay. I, I, I kind of want to get a sense from everybody, like, when you think about how much, uh, like, how hard or, like, how much effort it is to answer these questions with papers what would your general like feeling be? is it like oh man it's a lot of work because i have to like think about what to say or is it like oh it's easy i can just put a link in you know i can link a paper that i know that supports or uh, like rejects the hypothesis and it's very easy for me to do so like, what's the general feeling here on that it i don't know if you had experience like this because you know i i frequently would in the past, go and debate something reasonably scientifically proved, 
like in right. the comment sections uh, you know among dif in different forums or whatever yeah my personal fear is that people who have not the nearest clue of what <laughs> is going on are right. going to up uh, like absolutely out you know out man in numbers the people who are willing to write you know careful and weighted comments and applaud relevant papers and it's going to be right. really hard to fight them because it right. it takes them two clicks what takes you like a bunch of text to explain your opinion why it shouldn't be there you know <laughs> right right it's also really hard where like um you can see a paper's title in an abstract that seems like it's relevant and then when you actually read the paper it's trash it's trash mm -hmm. but you actually have to read the paper which takes you know 45 minutes to an hour to dig into it so i think it's it's even a lot of work just to add one relevant citation if you're doing it faithfully and like you know to the best of your ability right well i'm i'm assuming when people add these citations they already have some papers in mind right like experts in the field like let's say in the field of like sleep science like they know oh yes this paper answers this question like i know it if we limited it to experts, I think that could work. If people are like already familiar with stuff in their field, then yeah. But I mean, if even for experts, the experts will probably take their time to explain why they think it's relevant, right? Because there is going to be rarely an article that directly answers a question, right? It's always going to be yeah, this has been wants. done in cats or in infants or whatever. Right, 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 right. So then, like when pe when you guys are thinking about like a community wiki that people can all edit like how do you i guess like when you're thinking about hey if i need to if i want to go edit this thing from like a community wiki versus like a comment versus like a short statement here which one gives you the most anxiety because you're like oh it's gonna like i don't want to do it you know it's gonna take me a long time and the communal wiki anyone can edit yeah anybody can edit this thing so you can I think I, then I guess the community wiki gives me the most anxiety, but not because of the amount of work, but because other people can like delete and edit <laughs> stuff I wrote. Yeah. Pat, do you have any other questions? We've got like a minute left, and there's I want to spend like two or three no, minutes. Got nothing else. Yeah. 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 Um, so thanks to Anton and Nami, who invited me to, to chat at a conference last week. Uh, we ended up getting connected with the founder of Open Science Framework. And I'm grabbing a, he actually lives like five minutes away from me, which is crazy. But um, I'm grabbing a coffee with him um, on Friday. So uh, he wants to collaborate with us in some way. So I wanted to be able to like pitch ideas to him during that coffee meeting. So if you guys have any thoughts on things that we could do together, um, yeah, I would love to hear him just to be able to have like five or six ideas on deck to be able to throw at him if he's interested. Well, what the obvious thing that you could do is you could have your, you know, have research hub as a unifying place where people can store stuff from OSF. Like, so the way it usually works, people have a link in their paper where they uh, a link that leads to OSF, where all the you know interesting stuff like data and scripts usually reside. Uh, so what you could do is you can like actually merge it in one place. You can have both the paper and all the files like readily available on the Research Hub, or maybe the select few that the authors want to highlight, like the data. OSF has an open API where, um, like, we could, in theory, like, show the data that's stored on OSF, like, just resolved within the page on the Research Hub paper page. So that's definitely an option. You could. Another idea would be you could use it to link pre-registration with the study. So, like, um, basically, yeah. So you would uh, go on, on Research Hub, open one of the pages, and there would be, like, the study that's complete. And then you could go in a separate section and have a discussion of the pre-registration, like the way it was originally done. And maybe people can discuss how much you know th they faithfully um, cre created you know, their design and how much they deviated. Because that's a thing, right? That's a thing in, in a lot of research, how people promise one thing and then 
down the road they deliver another thing and no one knows why probably something fishy so that's pretty interesting you're thinking like uh make a paper page for pre-registrations and link that to the initial paper on research hub so that way people can discuss how uh faithful it was in a way i think maybe they don't even they shouldn't even be like separate pages they should be like twin pages like you can like a tab inside uh, the main page okay cool Yeah, just like, why is to think about incentivizing those behaviors like registration and following through the registration is the second one. Um, and I think the token can be used on that purpose as the dodge is so successful. So, maybe. That's, that's true. You, that's true. I think NAMI is onto something. You remember how you had your pre-registration uh, initiative? But it didn't, you know, go particularly well. You could, you could recreate this with OSF, right? So you could incentivize people to upload stuff to OSF and Research Hub, and you could give them some research coin if they essentially, you know, make a complete nice pre-registration in the format that you want. And maybe you you could follow up with this idea of like the lab notebook. Remember, you, you, so essentially, you can make people initiate the process on OSF because that's where they typically do it already. Yeah. And then, and then keep posting more and more progress reports on Research Hub. You know, that's that's a genius idea because most of the people I would assume who are doing pre-registrations on OSF probably share preprints as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it would even make sense. Like you do, you share the pre-registration on OSF. You don't even know about Research Hub then you get some research coin. Once it's ready you know, to have some kind of manuscript come out of it, you post that on step two, it goes to Research Hub, you get more coins, and then there can be peer review on Research Hub of yeah. that manuscript. Yeah, you could be like, you could be, like when they upload stuff to OSF, OSF give you this, uh, gives you this like option menu, like click if you want to like automatically enroll in this thing called Research Hub. And if they click, like they will be prompted to create an account or whatever, and then they you integrate the OSF account with your research hub account, and everything you upload as a pre-registration goes toward creating content automatically on research hub, right? Yeah, that's super cool. I think that would be really cool. That's kind of what I was thinking in my head. So it's it's awesome to hear you guys validate that because I bet that um, uh, Brian would probably be interested in collaborating with us because then you know it's. Ideally, more people do pre-registrations if you can get some money for it. So, cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah, they're doing cash. That's a great point, Nami. Great. Um, and then I'll publish the blog on the power user thing, Anton, like you said. And then I'll just give everybody who commented this week some extra RSC just for uh, helping out um, last week to make up for it. But um, do you guys have any uh, other thoughts for us before we jump off? So we officially started. Starting today, next week, seven comments uh, or seven papers plus comments equals 1,200. Yeah, yeah. I've got the numbers here. I, I know Nicholas did like nine posts and a bunch of comments. So I just want to yes. make sure that he gets some uh, for doing that. But yeah, I think we can we can give everybody some, you know, just for, for the help, just to, you know, have everybody be happy. But I'll, I'll publish a blog tomorrow with like the official breakdown and then like a Google Sheets. But everybody who's on these calls, we already know who you are, you know, so you're automatically enrolled. You don't have to do anything. Just feel free to comment. And then like, I'll keep track of everything. Cool. Yeah, do you guys have, have anything else before we jump off? And yeah, maybe um, we can just like do a quick like poll on like which version you preferred for that uh, hypothesis feature. The, the wiki, the, the pseudo comment section and the the one line summaries so the comment so the comment but well, nami do you guys feel the same way yeah i agree like the two or three i don't know <laughs> i hope that i kind of like the weekly version as like knowledge generation platform Mm. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's just like I'm not using it right now, so 
There is probably there is probably going to be a time and place for wiki style entries down the road. I think it will emerge eventually. Maybe not in in this particular function. I agree. Once once the community is there, it makes a lot more sense. But right now, like, I, I, if I'm going to put three hours into a comment, I want some credit for it. You know. What mm -hmm, I mean? mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I don't want to be anonymous making that contribution. And maybe somebody just deletes my three hours of work, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. totally. If we did a wiki, wiki, we'd probably have, like, the version history and work out mm -hmm. the where you can roll it back and see what all the changes were. Someone would need to moderate it, right? Yeah, that's hard. Like, I don't look at the version history of Wikipedia ever. Like, I would never do that. Right, right, right. Um, we, this is a small sample size too, Thomas and Pat. So we should we should right. get some more opinions. Um, yeah, I uh, I'm hanging in out with somebody tonight where I can uh, bounce it off them. And so yeah, I, I've got a call plan with a group of people, and then going walking through it too. You nice. can also post it in Slack itself and ask people. That's to true. Work. We can just post it in Slack, right? Sure. So there'd be a lot of people who might have opinions. Yeah, it's too complicated though. Like it's hard to to totally set the scene properly. But it is yeah. true. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thanks, guys. This has been awesome. Thank you very much. Cool. Let's see you. See you. Bye bye.